Hey guys, glad I get to see you all again, or at least I get to put a video out for you guys again. And this one is dealing with three different birds that have come to Arkansas and one that is still here in Arkansas that I'm very grateful for. But it, the reason these birds are coming, it's all because of conservation. I can tell you that our wildlife management areas are doing an awesome job. Our Arkansas Game and Fish is doing an incredible job to create habitats for these beautiful birds, as well as private landowners. We've got private landowners now in Arkansas that are developing bird sanctuaries. And it, what, what, an, what an incredible thing to be a part of and to be able to see. And when I say be a part of, we're all a part of it. Every time you or I go out, we have an opportunity to be a part of conservation. Leave the place you're in better than what you found it. And that's how conservation really works on an individual basis with each and every one of us. Pick up that trash that's there. I can tell you, I have been out here the past couple of weeks and I have seen a lot of trash out there. And, uh, you know, two bagfuls, not bragging on me. Uh, there was another uh, 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 photographer that was with me. And, uh, you know, we decided, hey, you know, instead of complaining about it, we're just going to pick it up. So that's what I'm asking you. You fellow photographers and wildlife photographers that are out there, hey, pick it up. Just pick it up. And we did get t-shirts made that says, bird photographers, pick it up. So anyway, there you go. There's an idea for you. But today, so I want to share uh, three different birds with you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the wood storks that were here. We're going to be talking about king rails that are here. And we're going to be talking about a limpkin that is here. Now, this one limpkin is the only one that I know of so far that is in the state. And what an incredible opportunity to be able to film this. I, want, I appreciate there was a, a gentleman that uh, put the word out that this limpkin was in the state. And, uh, uh, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, however, you all know that I do not give locations of endangered species or rare birds that come to Arkansas simply because there are uh, programs that are really trying to to be developed to keep these birds here and breeding here. So, with that said, why don't we start with the limpkin. When you see limpkins on the ground and you notice them and all of a sudden they're starting to look up and they're, they're going back and forth look up then they're about to jump up into that particular uh, tree or that branch to get to an area to either fly off or to preen or to uh, get some sun and that way you know if you're filming one that you can move to an area to where you can see wherever the branch is that uh, is outside of the tree line that's normally where that limpkin is going to go. So now, a lot of you already know that uh, limpkins, uh, one of their main diet is an apple snail. And the apple snail uh, down in South America and Southern Florida, and maybe maybe some in Southern Texas and Louisiana. But uh, the, the, the apple snail is what the limpkin normally eats. But when they come to Arkansas, man, they are muscle bound. I'm telling you, this little dude right here, a probably I counted now I, I've, I've been with him for six days and every day I've at least counted on average 30 mussels that uh, he consumes and I'm sure there's more than he's consumed that I, I can't see but uh, when I watch him that's what I have counted is it as is a uh, an average of 30 mussels over the past uh, six days for this particular limpkin 
and eat, also they eat some snails uh, as well as crayfish and every once in a while they might grab a fish but uh, their thing is the mussels now one of the th ways they get into that muscle is man they will tap 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 now li listen listen to this video So here's a picture of that uh, of the muscle that uh, he would peck a hole in the side. When they're large muscles, he'll peck a hole in the side of those muscles to uh, to really open it up and to make that muscle let go. And then he uses his his top and his bottom beak. He'll use the top beak to hold on to the edge and the bottom beak to just like a can opener on the, to the around the uh, the edge of the muscle where it's you know where it's clamped together. And he will use that beak to to uh, open up that muscle. And uh, you will see, now these mussels, uh, when you see a, several little piles of mussels around on a, on a lake shore or uh, in, a, in, a, in a muddy area, then, and with holes in it, then it's possibly there's a limpkin uh, that is in this area. Now, limpkins are social birds. Uh, it, it, however, it, did, it took me a couple of days to get this particular limpkin used to me um, and know, to know that I was not going to harm it. Now, keep in mind, I use a fairly large lens, and so I'm not right up on it. But, you know, this limpkin uh, finally uh, would come out and uh, do its thing, and I was able to film uh, <laughs> its personality, and, and which, which I love to capture the personality. And I love to try my best to kind of capture these birds, you know, in, in, in different types of lighting because their, their feathers, the color on their feathers is incredibly beautiful. You know, in some light it looks real brown, but then there are times where it just looks bronze. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited that this limpkin is here. Uh, I'm hoping that it is going to uh, overwinter here, uh, but I won't know for another, you know, several weeks 
uh, if that's going to be the case. There's only one. There's not a pair. I'm hoping that maybe one will show up, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll see what happens. So I, I I've, I've appreciated the opportunity. I've been filming Limpkins for about five years now, and you know I have really gotten to know uh, you know a lot of their habits, their habitat, and a lot of those things that uh, Limpkins do in order to survive. Limpkins are not an endangered species, uh, but they are a rare species that comes to Arkansas, and that is why I uh, do not give out uh, the location. So please, if you're calling me or you're, you're messaging me about the location, uh, I'm just going to say to you that I won't give it out, and, and uh, just please understand that that's part of my conservation efforts to try to uh, uh, keep some of these rarer birds and endangered birds here in Arkansas. Now, our next bird uh, is probably one of the ugliest birds that uh, and, and beautiful in its own way. But I tell you, it's it's one of those faces that only a mother can love, and that's our beautiful wood storks that have been coming to Arkansas. And what an incredible sight to see these! You know, when they come to Arkansas, boy, there's such a there's such a a, a a hurry to try to get them because they're not here very long. And so there have been several sightings in Arkansas that uh, uh, pertain to the wood storks. They are uh, a, an endangered species as of right now. I do know that the uh, uh, Wildlife uh, Federation is looking at taking them off the endangered species because they have reached a threshold that the Wildlife uh, Federation set. But as of right now, they're still there on that endangered species list. And, and so I just uh, uh, I just want you to know that that's another reason why I just don't give out locations of these beautiful birds. But all I'm going to do on this one, just say is this. I'm going to show some video here of uh, the wood storks and maybe a couple pictures. I am not an expert on wood storks. Limpkins are my thing. I still don't consider myself an expert on limpkins, but I know quite a bit about them. But the, the wood storks, I'm, I'm learning. Uh, but man, I tell you, what a graceful uh, bird uh, this is. And I'm very grateful that, uh, that to one of our private landowners here in Arkansas that has created a sanctuary specifically targeted to wood storks. So we're hopeful that maybe uh, we might even have uh, a breeding pair that, uh, that begins to happen here in Arkansas as well. So let's watch this video. Again, the wood storks I have found are social birds. They're not one of those birds that, that take off like the egrets uh, do, the, 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 uh, the snowy egrets and the herons, uh, but the, uh, the wood storks are a social bird, and uh, they're not uh, too afraid of humans. Now, if you get too close, yes, they're going to take off. But uh, one of the best places uh, to really capture the, 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 uh, the wood storks uh, that I love are in trees and you know they 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 act up they play as you can see that these guys uh, love to, to play around these juveniles playing back and forth you know with one another and and uh, so that's a that's a pretty cool thing to be able to to witness uh, with the wood storks and when they eat uh, in the water they're going back and forth with their beaks they're walking and going back and forth back and forth back and forth and uh, you know trying to capture those fish and those big old beaks that they've got and, uh, but it's just a pleasure to be able to uh, film these guys and gals and, and uh, have the opportunity to see them. But again, they're not here in Arkansas very long. And uh, so next year, when you see me start posting pictures of them, you'll know that they are back in Arkansas. And uh, you know, so they, they love to travel through. This year we had quite a few of the wood storks here. And uh, so it was just an exciting time for a lot of photographers that had the opportunity to capture the wood storks. Now, on our next one, this one is an endangered species as well. Uh, the, the king rail uh, is one of those birds that uh, is on a lot of individuals' list, uh, lifer list, to be able to capture. And we have them right here in Arkansas again. And the Game and Fish has done an incredible job of uh, bringing the king rail to Arkansas or getting it to come back and to breed. And, and so it's some exciting times for Arkansas. And I know that as soon as we have enough population of the king rails, that uh, they will let people know where they're able to go to, to get the photography, to get pictures, and to get video of these beautiful birds. 
And I tell you, when you're walking down the trail, you will know the king rail. You'll know its sound. And I would encourage you to, to go to uh, Cornell or to Audubon or to Merlin and to listen to see what the king rail sounds like. Because in most cases, you'll hear them before you see them, similar to least bit turns. So I would, uh, I would go and, and, and listen to their sound. And, and so, but I had the opportunity to go to an area and to film uh, these beautiful birds. And just recently we found one in a location that they haven't really had a, had a sighting of one since 2008. And so they are expanding, their territories are expanding, and, and, and I'm sure that there are more here in Arkansas that we uh, know of. When I was walking down this uh, trail, um, where the king rails, where I knew there had been sightings of king rails, uh, I, I, I walked for uh, probably six miles uh, one way, that, and then six miles back. Uh, but right as I was about to give up, I heard one. And I thought, uh-oh. And then I heard another one, and I'm thinking, oh, they're communicating back and forth. This is going to be cool. So I go, and uh, I set up. Uh, I carry a, that, that, that type of hike. I, I carry light. I'm getting old, but I carry light, and uh, so I did have a, uh, a netting that I use, a camouflage netting that I use, and I just went and I sat, and it was probably maybe six hours or so before finally one of them decides to come out, and it just hung out and would go back and forth, back and forth. It really wasn't quite sure what this blob uh, of camouflage was over there. And uh, at one point, it did kind of come over there, and then it, it darted back because it, it realized that, oh, that's not uh, natural. And so anyway, uh, but this, uh, this was just a great opportunity to be able to film this guy going back and forth uh, in this area and uh, trying to find the other mate uh, that was calling out to him. And so that's... that's uh, it's just it's just awesome to be able to do these things. But you've got to be patient. You've got to sit there. You've got to scope out those places. If I had any tips for, for photographers as far as wildlife, that is scope the place out first. Wait and see what happens. Then sit and continue to wait. Um, that's, that's the only thing that I can tell you. There are times where we know where those birds are, but that is uh, probably the, the best tip uh, for bird photographers if you're really wanting to get some of the rarer birds is to go sit, is scope, and then go sit and wait on them. So listen, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this uh, video. I hope you got some information out of it, some good information. And uh, I will be coming back to you soon with another uh, Tales of Conservation in Arkansas. And we are, uh, we are excited about what's going on here in our state and because it is becoming a, uh, a nationally well-known birding state and will continue to grow with your help. So, hey, God bless you. And, uh, of course, if you have any questions, you're able to uh, email me. My email's there or look me up on Facebook, Robert Holt on Facebook. I've got a little uh, blonde lab that's there, Max, and uh, you're welcome to do that. So, uh, also... I do want to say uh, that uh, I appreciate all of those that uh, are supporting uh, are supporting the efforts of going down to Wheeler Wildlife Refuge and to Port Aransas, Texas, uh, down in that area. And if you'd like to know more information about going to those two areas as far as birding photography, hey, let me know. It's not a tour. It's not a cost. It's all free as far as as far as my part. It's not free to go down there. But uh, anyway, just uh, let me know if you'd like some information on that. All right. God bless you guys. I look forward to the next time.